Hi, I'm Lance Williams. I'm a graduate of Karis Bible College. I'm currently serving in Victory Life Church in Duran, Oklahoma. Uh, just to tell you a little bit about myself, I used to be a bad meth addict. Uh, I was selling it, I was using it, I was on the needle every day, in and out of prison, and God has totally set me free from that. I've also been healed of physical sicknesses. One of those uh, was Crohn's disease. And so what I want to talk to you about today is the, the very basic and foundational things of how to receive from God, uh, whether it be inner healing or external healing. So anyways, God's really done a work in my life. Uh, he showed me some things, and so it's, uh, it's a great honor to be here to share it with all of you. Uh, first of all, in the first step in receiving from God is knowing His will for you. So you can't receive from God if you don't, if you don't know what He wants to give you. Uh, there is a, a phrase that a lot of people use out there, and they'll pray something and say, if it be your will. And that is faith-destroying words. That phrase right there, if it be your will, is faith-destroying words. Hebrews 11.6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God. So God has revealed to us or given us his his will for our life and for humanity. So we need to know what that is so that we can cooperate with that and cooperate with the laws of God. Because when you say, if it be your will, that is a statement of unbelief. That is not of faith and that is not pleasing to God. Now, I'm not condemning anybody who does that or, or who has done that um, because that's, that's a tradition that a lot of people have been taught. But it's, it's not a good thing to do that. It's not a good thing to profess unbelief when you're trying to believe for something. So anyways, um, in Romans 12 too, it says, Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It also says in Ephesians chapter 5, it says, Be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And so... The Word consistently talks about that we need to renew our mind. We need to renew our mind from to what, who, what God says about us and not what we've been told, not what we've been taught by men. Uh, the Scripture says that the traditions of men make the Word of God of none effect. So it's not the Word that doesn't produce, but a lot of times it's our traditions that we've been taught or it's lies that that we believed so anyways uh, in Romans ten seventeen, it says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God so we need to get into the Word of God get into the scriptures discover God's will for our life so that we can start cooperating with that and receive from God the most important thing in life is relationships. It's relationship with God and relationship with other people. We need to know who God is. We need to be able to receive from God. And it makes it very difficult to receive from God when we don't know who He is and we don't know what He wants for our life. So let's get in the Scriptures, find out what He's saying for us, because when we know that He desires his desires for us is to be saved, to be set free, to be delivered, and to be healed. Then we can, can cooperate with that. So the word saved in Bible, in the Bible, when you think of the word saved, what do you think of? Most people think of just eternal salvation. That's what they think of. Now that word does include that, but it's not limited to that. So the Greek word for saved is actually sozo. And what it means is to be, to be saved, delivered, and to be healed, and to be preserved. So when it talks about in the Bible about being saved, 
It's also talking about being healed, both inner and physical. Uh, when you receive a physical healing, it's actually just an external of what's already happened internal. In Psalm 103, verse 3, uh, this, David says, He forgives all your iniquities and He heals all your diseases. That's good news. He's Healing and salvation from sins, it's, it's hand in hand. So if we can receive salvation, then we can also receive healing. It's already, it, it's in the same package. Who forgives all your iniquities. There is not one sin that you've committed that can't be forgiven. Also, there's not one sickness out there that can't be healed by the Lord Jesus Christ and faith in Him. So we're going to talk about the very foundational things of that. What I'm going to share with you is very simple, uh, yet very profound. What I'm going to share with you, I... I practice this every day. And if we, if we will take this, what's going to be talked about today, and apply it in our life daily, then it will produce in our life. So anyway, I'm going to be in Luke chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 5. give you a minute to get there. Luke 8, 5. It is the parable of the sower. Jesus said about this parable, he said, if you can't understand this parable, then how can you understand any of the other parables? So this is a foundational parable um, that we should, we should practice daily. So Luke 8, Chapter 8, verse 5. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside. And it was trampled down. So it just fell where people walked, and it was trampled down. And the birds of the air came and devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. And you know, we can hear with our ears, but when he's talking about here, he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear, let him perceive. So when we hear these things, we don't need to hear them with our natural mind. We need to perceive these things with our heart and get an understanding of these principles that he's talking about. Because I can tell you, if we get an understanding of this parable right here, it will totally transform your life. I mean, I've been clean off of meth for five years, totally set free, been healed of things, and it all has stemmed from this parable and having an understanding of this parable. And it can be the same for you too. So right here, he's talking about the four, four different types of ground. And one out of four produces good ground or produces good fruit. Three of the four did not produce any fruit. So I'm going to jump down to verse 11 down here. This is Jesus explaining the parable that he just talked about. Jesus is speaking. Now this, now the parable is this. The seed is the word. So the seed is the word. So there was seed that was attempted to be planted on all four of these types of ground. So the word was attempting, it was a, it was, the word was being planted in these four different types of ground, but only one type of ground produced the fruit. So the seed is the word of God. Verse 12, those by the wayside are the ones who hear, 
then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their heart. So when we hear the word, when we, when we first hear it, that's why Jesus was talking about he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear with his heart. Because we can just hear it with our ears and it goes in one ear and out the other and we just forget it. In James, it, it uh, says don't, let, or don't be hearers of the word only, but be doers of the word. It talks about that when we hear it only and we don't do it, that we're, we're deceiving ourselves. So right here, he's talking about that we need to hear the word. We need to receive it, and we need to understand it, have understanding of it. You know, that's why it's so important to, to not just read the word, but meditate and ponder on the word. I think it's more beneficial if we were to just ponder on one verse for a lengthy amount of time than read 10 chapters. I'm not saying reading a bunch is, is bad, but when we ponder something, when we meditate on the Word, it gets inside of us, and then we start doing it, and that's how the Word of God actually becomes a part of us. Amen. That's good news. If we'll, if we'll just apply that principle right there, it'll change our life. Get the Word in us through meditation, through pondering on the Word, thinking on it, rolling it around in our mind, and then being a doer of the Word. It'll transform your life just like it has mine. Then the devil comes and takes away the Word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. And this word saved here is the word sozo. So lest you could read it like this. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear. Then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should be healed. And look, notice the one who's taking the seed. It's the devil. It's the enemy. There might be some of you out there that's, that has not received healing and you're blaming it on God. And I'm telling you, it's not God's fault because God has already provided for us. God has already saved us. God has already healed us. God has already delivered us. It's up to us to receive it. And there's also opposition out there. There's a devil out there that hates humanity, that hates God. So if there's some of you out there that's, that's blaming these things on God, it's not God's fault. God has already provided for us. All we got to do is receive it, believe it, and act on it. That's good news. In John 10, 10, it says, Jesus said, The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. So if there's anything that is stealing in your life, it's the enemy. If there's anything that's killing in your life, it's the enemy. If there's anything that's destructive in your life, it is the enemy. It's not God. You could pipeline the whole Bible through that one verse, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus has come that we may have life, have the God kind of life. In that God kind of life is no sickness. It, there is no bondage. He has already overcome that. And now we have the life of Jesus, the life of the resurrected Jesus already dwelling in us. Now all we got to do is believe it, receive it, believe it, and act on it. It's simple. It's very, very simple. Moving on. So verse 13. But the ones on the rock are those who when they hear receive the word with joy. And these have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. You know, I've experienced this myself um, I've actually experienced all of this, but specifically on that one, uh, when I was in prison the second time, I just I was going to these Bible studies Monday through Friday, uh, church on Sunday. We had an excellent uh, chaplain in this prison system I was in, and I mean I was really seeking after God. 
uh, I would I would pray to him, you know, a few times a day and then consistently throughout the day. I was going to these Bible studies. And I'll tell you, in prison, I experienced the joy of the Lord. It was awesome. And, man, I was like, I don't, I don't want to go back to drugs. I don't want that. I want to keep living this life. Even though I was in prison, the, the life that I was, was, the life that I was living from inside internally, I was like, wow, this is awesome. I am so joyful. I'm so happy. I don't want anything else other than what I have right now talking about my relationship with God. Obviously, I wanted to be set free from prison. But I wanted this joy to continue. And see, when I got out of prison, uh, on that time I was only there a few months. So this is only a few months of, of really walking with the Lord. I got out of prison, and the first two weeks I was out, I was like, I'm, I'm not getting high again. I'm just going to you know, stay walking with the Lord. But I didn't. I didn't. See, I didn't have that root. I, I, haven't, I hadn't took time. I was taking time in the prison system, but, you know, it takes longer uh, than just two or three months. And so I, when I, when I got out of prison, I didn't, I wasn't walking with the Lord like I had been in prison. And so I started drifting. Well, since I didn't have that root and I didn't maintain that ground uh, that the Word was planted in, I didn't maintain my heart, I didn't keep that relationship with the Lord, well, then other things started coming into my life and, and destroying, started destroying my life again. So when it's talking about right here, the ones on the rock are those when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away. That was me because I received the word with joy. I was so joyful. I was so happy even in prison. Yet when I got out, and I didn't keep walking with the Lord, and I faced temptation, I fell, and I was back in drugs, and I wasn't walking, I was I, I quit walking with God anyway, well, I kind of, I didn't totally quit at first, uh, but for two weeks, I just kind of drifted away from Him, and then when I got back on drugs, I just quit walking with God uh, for the most part, so in time of temptation, I fell away. In verse 14, he's talking about now the ones that fell among thorns and those who, when they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life and bring no fruit to maturity. That is one that I, I actively have to evaluate now in my walk with the Lord because when, it's, when it says choked with cares, you can also say anxieties. And you know, I mean, everybody, there is temptation to worry and be anxious. Uh, just the world we live in. We live in a fallen world. Bad things happen. And we're tempted to worry about things. And it, what this is saying right here, that anxieties and worries will actually choke the word out. And two things that I have determined that I'm not going to do is I'm not going to, I refuse to be offended and I refuse to worry. And when I say that, I'm not saying that the temptation to be offended doesn't come or the temptation to worry doesn't come, but I refuse to hold it. I will get in prayer and I say, Lord, I refuse to be offended. I give this offense to you. I am not going to carry it in Jesus' name. I'll do the same thing with worry and anxieties. I'll say, Father, I give these anxieties to you. I refuse to pick them back up. These are yours. I cast my care on you, and I refuse to carry this weight. And then after that, I'll just, when the, when the worry or offense tries to come back to me, I'll say, Father, thank you that you've taken this from me. Thank you that I don't have to carry this. And through a continual thanksgiving, I keep that stuff offloaded on God and I don't I don't have to carry it. It's not mine to carry. I wasn't created to carry that. All I was created to do was walk in total dependence of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's all that's all we're called to do is just depend on God and give all our worries, our cares, our anxieties, 
our sin and our sicknesses. Give it all to God and walk in true freedom. Jesus said, I believe it's John 8, 32. He says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The truth that we know shall set us free. So when we receive the truth of God's word, and it, it's very plain in here, it, it says, cast your care upon me for I care for you. It says that he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Uh, that's Matthew eight seventeen, Psalm 103, verse 3, it says, Who forgives all your iniquities and heals all your diseases. 1 Peter 2, 24, says that He bore our sins in His own body on the tree, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. See, we get into the Word and we discover these truths, and then we ponder upon these truths we don't we don't just let it go we think on these things get it on the inside of us by thinking on it meditating on it and then doing it and that's where that's where the freedom is it's very simple very very simple you know Jonah when he was in the in the well you know he ran from God and he was in the well he finally repented and he started thanking God for his deliverance. But he didn't get delivered and then thank God. He started thanking God for his deliverance and then he did it without any signs of being delivered. But then, after he was offering the sacrifice of thanksgiving is what the scripture says, then the well vomited him up. You know, it's the same with us. We need to get in the word. We need to discover God's will for our life. We need to discover God's will for us to be well, to be set free from sin, to be set free from sickness, to be set free from demonic torment. And we need to get this word in our hearts. And we need to thank God for His word before we ever see it come to pass. And then that's when the thing shall come to pass. You know, uh, one time I was, I had some issues going on, it's a long story, but I was actually fearful that I was going to go blind. Um, and I was having some real problems with my eyes. And I, I was in fear for about a week. I was, I was really scared to death. And, you know, I just decided. I was like, you know what? I have chosen to live my life for God. And I said, either this word is true or it's not. And I remember for a period of nine days, I would just, I would just walk out there in this pasture that we have at, at a, in my hometown in Arkansas. I'd walk out there and I would just confess the word and I'd just start thanking the Lord for my healing and confessing uh, Matthew eight seventeen over myself that He Himself took my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. And in a period of nine days, I got totally healed. Totally healed from something that had been plaguing me for almost a month that I was really fearful I was going to go blind. See, I went out there and I put that word in my heart through thinking on it and through speaking it out and thanking the Lord that that word was going to come to pass in my life and I got totally healed. And you know, God is no respecter of persons. The word works for me just like it will work for you. But we need to watch the things that choke out the word. Uh, the next thing here is riches. Verse 14. So we've talked about cares. This one's riches. People chasing out after the dollar. Chasing after money. You know, it's, God has, has commanded us to work. So we should work, but we shouldn't just work and work and work and work and chase after, after money. God says you can't serve money and God, but when you serve God, He'll make sure you got the money. Seek first the kingdom and all these things will be added unto you, Matthew 6, 33. So we need to let give the cares to God. We need to, we need to not chase after riches and chase after money, but chase after God instead. And the, the other one here is 
and pleasures of life. I will say this, God wants us to enjoy life. God has created us to enjoy Him and enjoy life. So it's not saying that we can't have any pleasure in life, but we can't just, you know, at one time, life to me was just all about having fun. It was just all about having fun. That's why I got into drugs. That's one of the reasons I got into drugs and was living a life of destruction because I just thought it was all about having fun. Well, now I've realized it's not all about having fun. To me, it's all about loving God and loving people. Knowing God and getting to know other people. And I have a great time. You know, I really enjoy going snow skiing and playing some football or some kind of sport. I really enjoy spending time with my wife. Um, but I can't just have all pleasure at the expense of God's Word, of not, not taking any time for God's Word. We need to have quality and quantity time in God's Word, getting this Word in our heart. And, you know, we take this for granted. People over in some of these other countries, it's illegal to have Bibles in some, other, some of these other countries. And yet, we have one right here we have access to anytime. Even in the day of Jesus, they had to go to the temple. And uh, the temples and the, the synagogues, and they had to, to read from a scroll. And we have our own personal copies. Some of us have many. And so we don't need to take that for granted. We need to spend time in God's Word. Not, I'm not talking about legalism to be approved by to God. God, He loves us no matter what. But take time to get in the Scriptures, to get to know God, and to plant these words, plant His Word in our heart. Because I will tell you this, if you have a need, you need to plant the seed. If you need healing, then you need to plant the seed of healing. Matthew 8, 17, he bore your sicknesses. If we need deliverance, we need to get in there and find a seed for our need. If we need finances, 2 Corinthians 9, 8, God is able to make all grace abound to, toward you, that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. Amen. We need to plant that in our hearts and thank the Lord for that, that seed coming to pass, that that word coming to pass, and it will come to pass. So, and right here, and then bring, so, choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. But the ones that fell on good ground are those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. The noble and good heart, an honest heart. One who not just hears it, but perceives it with the heart. And as I've already mentioned, that comes through thinking on the Word. In uh, Psalm 10, 4, chapter 10, verse 4, it talks about that the wicked keep God in none of his thoughts. So the practice of the wicked is to keep God in none of his thoughts. So the practice of the righteous, the practice of the, the children of God should be to keep God in our thoughts and to keep His Word in our mind. Uh, Proverbs 4, 20-22 talks about, we'll talk more about that in, in a later session, but it's talking about keeping the Word in the midst of our heart and not letting them depart from our eyes. And it says then, when you do that, then... The Word is health to all of your flesh, all your total being, all of your flesh, when we keep it in focus, keep it in our mind and keep it in our heart. And I will tell you this, I'm about out of time, but I'll tell you this, the gateway to the heart is the mind. So let's put the Word of God in our mind, let it get in our heart, and do the Word, practice the Word, and be changed, be healed, be set free, be delivered. Amen. Let me pray for you real quick. Father, we just thank you for everyone hearing this word, Lord. Father, may we be doers of the word and not hearers only, Father. Father, I just speak total deliverance from sin and from sickness, from poverty, from anything that steals, kills, and destroys over anybody hearing this message right now. 
Father, we just thank you for who you are in us, who we are in you, Lord. And I thank you that the people hearing this will receive it with gladness, will receive it and be doers of what we talked about today. Father, we thank you for it right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, looking forward to being with you sometime.